Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to the Tune Review YouTube channel. My name's Paul. Thank you so much for tuning in to the latest Newcastle United news. Uh, a lot going on at Newcastle at the moment, but we'll come to that in a second. If you do enjoy today's video, please do give it the thumbs up. And of course, if you're new and like what you see, why not subscribe? Free to do so, but don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload or a live show. Uh, right, as I said, plenty news going on this morning. Uh, we'll start off with Malik Chow. Of course, we did feature him on the live show last night. Uh, we took a more in-depth look at his stats and everything like that. And pretty much 90% of the viewers, I think it was on the vote, wanted to bring this guy in. And if you'd listened to previous media reports, it would suggest that the deal was very, very close to happening. It's hit bumps uh, and a lot of bumps in the road. Um, Keith Downey tweeted out this morning uh, that Newcastle United had... Definitely shown an interest in the player, but there was no agreement there. There was no fee agreed. Uh, there was nothing agreed with AC Milan, uh, and it was still far down the road for any transfer to happen. Now, since Keith Downey said that, uh, Chow's agent has also come out and absolutely denied the whole thing. Um, he's denied that there is any move in place and has actually said that he may stay at AC Milan next season. Uh, this is a huge kick in the teeth, I think, uh, for us Newcastle United fans because... Uh, we generally thought that uh, Chow was going to join the club and it seemed nailed on. If you were looking at all the other reports that had been um, thrown about in, in recent weeks regarding the player, uh, it seemed that his time at AC Milan was coming to a close. Newcastle United were going to put in an offer and hopefully um, as well because of what happened with Tonali, maybe that we could just work out a, a deal uh, which wasn't quite what Milan originally wanted for Chow um, and we could work out a slightly lesser deal. However, that ain't happening, guys. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, there's uh, any deal in place at the moment. And if there is going to be a deal in place, it's still going to take a long time to get this sorted uh, for any sort of transfer. So at the moment, right now, as I speak and do this video, it's looking very doubtful that Malik Chow uh, is coming to Newcastle United. Uh, there is still a few uh, media reports suggesting that the deal is still going ahead. But according to Keith Downey, there is no deal in place. And according to his agent, there's definitely no deal in place. Um, Newcastle United, of course, have shown an interest, as I said earlier on. However, that interest is all it is right now and nothing um, concrete in there for Malik Chow, which for me is disappointing because, you know, we we, uh, we have been slow off the mark this season with bringing players in. I know that Mitchell's just recently come in and things like that. But you look at other teams around us and they, they have strengthened already. Um, quite a few signings have been made by the, the clubs that are expected to be around us next season. Um, but... I'm still not panicking yet, guys. I, I really wouldn't panic yet. These guys know what they're doing. Um, of course, they'll have different names. Uh, they'll have different players to look at. Um, you know, But we've got the whole of August to go yet. So I think there's still plenty to do for Newcastle United in the transfer market. But let's not forget, you know, the, the squad we have there at the moment is very capable of giving everybody a game. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Um come back to me the end of August and if it's still the same signing wise then I, I think we would be a little bit worried and as fans probably allowed to ask a few questions as to what the hell's gone on but at the moment there's still what end of July now four weeks to go over the transfer window uh, there's still plenty of time for Newcastle to sort some deals out I do believe that, uh, that, that there will be two marquee signings if that's it then that's it but I think there will be marquee signings um, however we're always looking to add to the squad, of course, and we'll always be linked uh, with uh, with a lot of players. And one player that we are linked with uh, this morning is a move for William Asula uh, at Sheffield United. Now, Asula um, is worth £10 million, apparently. 20-year-old, he's at Sheffield United. Um, he's a striker, so, of course, this would be a striker to go alongside Wilson and Isak for next season. Um but you know what? It's it, it's expensive for ten million quid um, because he's not exactly proven. Uh, he's made twenty one appearances in the Premier League already, uh, and he's uh, failed to score and assist in that time. So when you think about it, twenty one games, he hasn't scored, he hasn't assisted. Yes, he's young. He's twenty year old, um, and maybe uh, the report I'm looking at now says that Paul Mitchell may see him as a uh, a great long term option, and this is what Mitchell's good at. Remember. Uh, he's got a past record of doing this with players, bringing in youth, 
bringing them on, spotting a player. So maybe, you know, we, we put our trust in Paul Mitchell with this one. Uh, but at the moment, he ain't scoring 21 Premier League uh, appearances or assists for that matter. But he is six foot four. He's a big lad. Uh, he's won six caps for Denmark's under 21s. Uh, and he scored once in that six games. Um, and he certainly outlined his pedigree, uh, as the report says, as a young international footballer. And um, he has been hailed as a serious player. Uh, by ITV pundits in the past so um, he is Danish as well so obviously like I say um, he wouldn't be coming as an immediate starter there's no doubt about that he's got a long term uh, a long time to get above uh, Isak and Wilson of course uh, but could end up maturing uh, now we said that about Minte Newcastle ended up selling them but we know the reasons for that of course uh, which was uh, eventually very disappointing for us wasn't it to see the back of Minte especially as he's doing so well in pre-season now but he's you know that, that ship has sailed now he's not a Newcastle United player it's time for us to look forward and not back uh, with regards to that uh, now this will probably make your blood boil uh, Ryan Fraser is still a Newcastle United player uh, nothing has been agreed with Southampton as yet uh, now this is what the Southampton manager said himself I think we're all hopeful that at some point that will happen uh, but he's contracted to Newcastle I think he would love to come back and we would love to keep him uh, everyone wants him me the fans the owners the players and the staff uh, and the wee man himself but he is under contract at another club and a good contract. Uh, it's their prerogative to do what they want with him. Uh, at the moment, and unfortunately for us and for the wee man, it's not what we want. <coughs> Excuse me. So much of football is about timing, uh, and there might come a time where it's no longer viable for us as an option. We have to be looking at other people as well. Now, what is interesting in that um, conversation or, or the interview with the Southampton manager um, Russell Martin, of course, uh, he, he under contracted another club and a good contract, which that would seriously indicate that last season when he was on loan at Southampton, Newcastle United still covered a lot of his wages and his wage demands right now, as we speak, are still quite high and Southampton aren't willing to meet those wage demands. So they're going to have to meet somewhere if indeed Fraser wants to leave. He is in his last year of his contract now at Newcastle. It, it, it expires in the summer of 25. Uh, but he is on very, very good wages, as we know. Uh, he signed a five-year contract, and again, one of these contracts that just you know beggars belief, really, for the the, the standard of player that he was. Um, however, Southampton still want him. That is obviously Russell Martin speaking there, saying yes, we definitely want him. But the good contract bit says to me that there is a stumbling block there with wages, and they are struggling to come to any sort of agreement regarding a move to Southampton. So at the moment. Ryan Fraser is still a Newcastle United player. Um, now, one player that isn't a Newcastle United player anymore, of course, was Paul Dummett, who was released at the end of last season. Um, and he looks to be setting himself for a year with Sheffield United, could you believe? So it may be that, um, you know, Paul Dummett is, is going to go into the championship and uh, give it a go for a season, maybe, maybe more. Um, he still wants to continue his career, of course. Uh, and I think he definitely still has something to offer down in the championship. There's no doubt about that in my mind. I think it'll be a good place for him to go and uh, go and play football uh, without a shadow of a doubt. He, he likes the you know the rough and tumble stuff, doesn't he? So he'll definitely get that in the championship. And it certainly wouldn't be a bad pickup for Sheffield United. You know, there was a few weeks ago rumours that uh, Matt Ritchie was going to go there as well. Um, that is yet to be seen. But I don't think there's been any move on Matt Ritchie while I've been away. I may be wrong about that. Uh, however, Dummett, uh, he looks to be signing very, very shortly for Sheffield United. So uh, best of luck uh, to Paul Dummett. Um, Lloyd Kelly uh, is a player that hasn't featured at all so far in Newcastle's pre-season. And uh, fans have been scratching their heads and asking the question, why? Where is he? Uh, well, it seems like this... Uh, Training style of Newcastle United is is back again. Of course, we, we wondered this about Lewis Hall last season. And, of course, Lewis Hall admitted and Eddie Howe admitted that, uh, you know, it took a, lot, a while for Lewis Hall to to grasp the kind of training regime that we have at Newcastle United. Uh, but Eddie's come out and said that uh, he's very close to playing, is Lloyd Kelly. Um, very, very much up to speed. Uh, but he's just trying to fit in the intense training style. So, of course... You know, we know that many players have come to Newcastle since Eddie Howe's been in charge and have mentioned the training regime and how intense it is. Many people have criticised this, especially last season with regards to the injuries. Was that the reason why we got so many injuries, that Eddie's pushing them too hard in training? Uh, the sheer amount of games that we're playing and the training regime doesn't go together. Um, of course, 
Bunsen's in now to, to, to look at that side of things with the injuries. Uh, he may well have a chat with Eddie about the training regime, but Eddie himself has said that he is just getting up to speed with the intense training style of Newcastle United. But we should see Lloyd Kelly uh, play one of the friendlies very, very soon. Uh, now, finally, Callum Wilson, of course, yet again on the injury list. And this has frustrated a lot of fans. To be honest with you, I'm still very surprised that Callum Wilson is a Newcastle United player. Uh, I did think he would be one of them to leave in the summer, but it seems like they're going to go with Isak as the main guy with Wilson uh, again this season, which kind of worries me. Uh, I know, you know, we're looking at uh, Osula, um, but he's not exactly a rampant goal scorer at the minute, still very young and raw. So if the same happens again this season with regards to injuries to Isak and Wilson, uh, you know what? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Wilson, for me, should have left. We should have sold him. Uh, of course, we still might. I mean, there's still four weeks to go in the transfer window. We still might sell him. But for me, um, I, I, I don't know. I'm not confident going into the season with Isak and Wilson, especially uh, with their injury uh, records. But Wilson is apparently out for five games, guys. He will definitely miss... Uh, the opening Premier League game of the season against Southampton. Um, so it's then just a case of wait and see to see if he's back after that. But again, he'll play no part in the preseason and he will miss the first Premier League game of the season. So you would expect, you know, if he's missing that many games, he's got to then get back on the field, get uh, get training again, get up to speed. So he might not be available for the first four or five Premier League games. Um which is it's so annoying. It really is. It's so annoying. And it puts extra pressure on Isak as well because if we're going with two strikers again, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that uh, you know, we might not get a Sula because he might be the third striker, but he's unproven. And, you know, we need proven strikers at this football club. We, we needed that last season. And we're taking the risk of it again this season. It's bizarre to me. It's absolutely bizarre. Um, but... Let me know. Let me know what you think of the Callum Wilson saga. Do you think he'll still be a Newcastle player when the season kicks off? I'm not so sure. I hope not. And I don't mean that any disrespect to Callum, but I hope that we bring somebody else in who knows the Premier League. And, you know, Callum is, is a way to uh, pass his new. Because I think he needs a change now uh, with the injury situation. He needs a, just to, 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 to go elsewhere. We can't put our trust in Callum Wilson. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know how you feel about it out there, but I just feel like we can't put our trust in that player. Um, I may be wrong about that, but let me know. But there you go. That is the latest news at the moment. Please, as usual, put your comments in below. And uh, I do read them all. Uh, you'll know I've read it. If I stick a heart next to it, that means I've read it. Uh, I will reply to some, of course, but we get that many. Um, but I do read them all. It's very interesting getting your feedback uh, on the latest news stories as well. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. As I said at the start, if you have enjoyed it, please give it the thumbs up. Very, very important for the channel. And of course, if you're new, please do hit that subscribe button. Uh, it is free to do so and uh, hit the notification bell as well so you never miss an upload or a live show. We are so close to 31,000 uh, subscribers. And of course, don't forget to vote for the Toon Review in the uh, Football Content Awards. That link is pinned at the top of the description. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, just fill your details in. And if you can vote for us in the... Uh, uh, best club content creator dash premier league so that's best club content creator dash premier league i would very much appreciate it so thank you for watching guys enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you very soon take care